Welcome everyone, Brett Rice with Core Vision Financial Group with another episode uh, on financial topics in our video series. Here as we continue on into 2021, we're going to keep doing these videos and trying to, you know, put out as much education as we can to uh, help everybody learn things they uh, want to know. Today we're going to be talking with Grant Reeves. Uh, he recently joined Core Vision and uh, we'll let Grant uh, take this opportunity to introduce himself. Uh, thank you. Yes, I, uh, I'm coming over to Core Vision as an investment advisor. I, uh, my background and what I still do, part of my time is as an attorney. Um, quite a bit of my um, legal practice is actually in estate planning uh, and small business work. So I think today we were going to discuss some of those types of topics from uh, the estate planning side as far as they relate to um, and tie in with uh, financial advice. So Grant, uh, tell us a little bit about your background as far as where are you from, where'd you go to school, you know, kind of give people, uh, you know, a little bit of background about your personal life. Sure. I grew up in uh, the northern part of Rush County and uh, live in Franklin County now. Uh, our My law office is over primary law offices over in Rush County now. I uh, went to Rose Holman and actually studied engineering and then went to the University of Michigan and studied a little bit more engineering and then um, went to law school at Duke and uh, in conjunction with law school I had the opportunity to get a master's degree in economics which always which ties in well with my interest in investment advising. Wow that's pretty impressive I did not know all of that stuff. So, uh, are you Duke fan, Michigan fan? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a Rose Holman fan, so they're, they're a sports powerhouse. But sure. uh, <laughs> no, I uh, yeah, I tend to follow Duke. This year's not the best year for that. Right. But, but normally, this time of year, I run my mouth at all the IU attorneys around here when it comes to basketball. But I'm uh, not sure this is going to be the year to do that. Great. Well, thank you very much for that introduction. I think that's a big deal for people to understand you know, how we fit in our local communities and where, you know, we kind of feel like our, our spot is in there and what our history is with each of those communities. So I think that's a big deal. And we want to make sure that, you know, we're, we're sharing that information so people understand that, you know, we're here in this community, we live in this community, we participate in it. Uh, now, did earlier, I think you said something, you're on a school board or? Yeah, I, I just actually went on the school board in uh, Franklin County. Okay. Um, I was uh, the, I ran unopposed, so I think I got on there by uh, default. <laughs> but um, that's uh, presenting new challenges. I've done a lot of work for uh, municipalities, representing them legally, and it's interesting to be on the other side of it, where I actually have my own opinions now, and I'm I'm making the decisions. It's a little bit different ball game. Yeah, so you've got a, a pretty wide-ranging uh, bit of experience going on between school, law, finance. You're, you're, you know, you're encompassing quite a bit of aspects of, of people's lives. Yeah, I, I, I've got a broad range of interests. Um, and I, I think it's, it's going to be fun to get all of this tied together as things start to develop more. Um, and I look forward to doing that, being able to tie in. Um, on a little deeper level, some of the estate planning work and things like that with the investment advising. So you've touched on it a little bit. Today we're going to be talking about estate planning. And you know, that's a one, of the, one of the things that when you start talking to people about estate planning, everybody gets a little, a little awkward and a little weird when you start talking about what's going to happen to your assets and possessions and you know, your children and everything. Uh, if something was to happen to you and you were to pass away or spouse passes away, how, how does all that, you know, transfer, you know, take place? So that's something today we want to dive into a little bit, kind of help people understand, you know, it's, well, it is awkward to have that conversation and nobody really likes to think about their own demise. It's something we have to plan for as, you know, legal advisor, like, like yourself, Grant, and, you know, financial advisors now, I mean, You've, you've really got to make sure you have that conversation with your clients or, you know, you may not doing what's in, be doing what's in their best interest. So let's dive on into this. Why don't you give us an, an intro to estate planning and kind of what it covers, what it is and what it isn't. So people kind of get an idea because I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there about what it is and what it isn't. Okay. 
Um, I, I see it as a way to make your wish is known. Uh, part of it comes in while you're living, but then also after you pass away um, so that you can avoid a lot of potential problems going forward. We see some some ridiculous family squabbles and fights like that, and then just some unintended consequences when people haven't prepared for that. Uh, usually when I, I approach that, there's sort of three prongs to it because it's just a good time to discuss several things when, when people are sort of in that mode. Um, it, the estate planning side, which is deciding what to do with your assets, or if you have young children, um, a guardianship for the children potentially as well. Um, one other one thing that we often talk about at that point is long-term care planning because there's, there's legal aspects of that. And then uh, the other aspect to think about while you're living is um, powers of attorney and medical powers of attorney so that in the event that you're, you're incapacitated, uh, or you need assistance that there's somebody to come in and take care of you at that point and, and make sure your wishes are carried out. You know, you can make your wishes known to your loved ones and they're not trying to, to make that decision, you know, when they're supposed to be, you know, grieving or making other decisions about what's going on. Uh, you know, you can tell them through a power, you know, a medical representation of this is what I want done, or here's my will, here's my estate plan, that, that it takes all of those decisions say, these were my wishes. This is what I want done. So I think that's a big piece to just talk to there because a lot of people are like, well, why, why do I need to do that? I'll, you know, I'll be gone. Why do I care? Well, it's because you want to make sure your wishes are known and your assets are divided up the way you would, would have wanted them to be. Uh, yeah, there certainly as far as taking care of your own wishes and then your family, um, the we do see unfortunate circumstances that come up. If, if you don't make your plan known, there are default state laws that govern that. And we'll take care of things generally, but they may not say what you want them to say. Um, for one thing, if you need a guardianship for your children, they're largely silent. It's probably going to go to some family member but you may end up with some tensions in the family and, and hopefully not, but potentially even a squabble over uh, guardianship of the children that people certainly wouldn't want. Um, if you're married and have children, the a lot of times the default rule, for instance, in the state of Indiana, would um, give 50% of your assets to your children um, that are not jointly titled with the spouse. Um, so there's a potential, say you had a bank account or financial accounts that uh, were didn't have your spouse's name on them. They could go immediately to the children instead of going to take care of your spouse. And, and, and it, this is particularly true if uh, in cases of second marriage, this can really cause a problem. Um, I've had an estate where uh, a um, stepchild basically came in and claimed back uh, probably 70% of the estate that I, I'm guessing that the deceased party really wanted to take care of the spouse, uh, but unfortunately there were just no directives there and the state law kicked in. So that's a situation we can easily avoid and draft around. Um, and then as far as the powers of attorney and things like that, it's a lot simpler to get those set up in advance. Uh, unfortunately, if you, if you wait until it's too long and you're incapacitated, uh, it may get to the point where we, the, the alternative is to go get a guardianship in court, which is considered a more complicated uh, and again, it might not even be who you wanted to be the guardian. Hopefully it is, and hopefully it's a family member that you trust. It's just you're going to have to go through a court proceeding to get that sorted out instead of making plans for that in advance. Yeah, I think, you know, I don't know how, what percentage of the population understands that, that there are already default decisions made that if you don't tell somebody how you want it done, you know, the state defaults to the things Grant just talked about. And there's, there's no other way around that if, unless you have an estate plan or a will, something that says this is what my wishes are. You know, without that, there's decisions already made. And, and a lot of times that it's not gonna be the same as you would want your assets. Your children's, you know, in the future, all that stuff may not align with your wishes, you know, and your values. So you wanna make sure that that stuff is known. It's a big deal, I really do think it's a big deal. So let's talk about if somebody wants to sit down and get this ball rolling and get, you know, get the estate planning going, get a will, power of attorney, medical rep, all that stuff going. Like what kind of information do they need to be thinking about? You know, uh, 
before they call and schedule an appointment to come in and sit down, what should they be, you know, have thought through and talked about, discussed as a, you know, as a couple, spouse with spouse, on what they need to know? Uh, first of all, in that process, I, I kind of think as is the person telling their story up front, I, I don't want them to get too bogged down in the legal details immediately because we will have people come in and they've got a, a, a predetermined notion that, oh, my neighbor had this and it was great, but that was your neighbor. Your circumstances may not be the same as your neighbor's. We may be able to do things more simply um, and, and better for you or in a way that you didn't think about. And that's where I, I kind of think it's the person telling me their story uh, up front where I normally start at is we'll go through and find out what your, your key assets are, if they're retirement accounts, uh, bank accounts, uh, real estate, investment properties. Different things can be handled different ways. Um, there, there's newer solutions in the law that Indiana and other states are adopting um, that give us some flexibility that wasn't there in the past that make things simpler. Um, and then also your story about what you want to happen as far as your family, um, if you want that split evenly amongst your kids, if there's a charity that you really want to support, uh, if you've got a, a, a child that's been involved in a farm or a family business that we need to sort of shuffle things around to accommodate for that, and you know, still treat the children equally, but give specific opportunities for that child that's worked hard in that family business, kind of step through and really understand what you have and what you want to happen in the big picture. Um, and then that's where we can really dig into the meat of the process um, and, and, and the mechanics and start to think about what makes sense for your particular situation and your goals. Some of the things that are useful usually to have coming in is that list of, of larger assets. Um, it doesn't need to be every little thing because there's a good chance that some of those will change over time. but kind of talk through what assets you have, your life insurance policies, uh, where all of those are kept. If you know if your beneficiaries are up to date on those, uh, if you know your beneficiaries are up to date on retirement accounts, those types of things. Um, and then uh, a, a general idea of what you want to happen, if you can come in with that as well, that helps us quite a bit. Um, the um, and then there are some other technical details where we'll need to get into. If it's a, on a will, we'd have a, a personal representative or you'll hear it called an executor as well. We'll want to talk about that, who would carry that out. Um, on the power of attorney side, you'll also want to know who your power of attorney is um, and on the medical side as well on who you, who you want to appoint as that. Frequently, that's going to be a spouse or a trusted relative. Uh, often, we can have a backup on that. Um, one that is a little bit of a sticking point because it's hard and it is really hard to think about is a, a guardianship for children. Um, and that's, that's one that takes a lot more discussion frequently with spouses trying to sort that out because that is such a big decision uh, that you know someone is going to be taking care of your children. And to the extent that you can think ahead on that or think through that um, as far as a primary on that and a backup on a guardian, um, and we can we can talk more about that. Frequently, people want to have all of this when they first come in. We kind of talk through the process, and, and there may be a list that they we give them sort of their call it their homework um, that we give them a list of things that they need to send in to us so we can finish drafting up the documents. So, Grant, that's uh, that's great information. I think it's something that isn't widely shared. You know, one of the things we keep touching on in this video series is this is all about financial literacy. There's a I think there's a huge gap in the world and what people think of certain things, you know, based upon what you've heard around the kitchen table and through friends at work and stuff and how some of these things actually apply. You know, you get what a lot of people like to refer to as the barracks lawyer. You always have the one guy at work who seems to know everything. Well, those people, you know, obviously are not lawyers and, and such. So con consulting with a professional is the best way to go. That's where you're going to get the best information, the most accurate information. So I personally think it's super important to make sure that you meet with a, a legal professional when you're trying to get these things in line. Um, so let's talk a little bit though about what are what are some of the in get let's get into the details a little bit like when you start talking about trust and irrevocable and revocable and you know some of the other details that are involved in these. Okay, uh, certainly. Yeah, the uh, there there is confusion over um, trust that we hear quite a bit. The um, the two 
primary types and you're here all sorts of types broken down within these that are probably a lot further beyond the scope of this video but the um, uh, would be a revocable trust versus an irrevocable trust and the goals of those are are quite different their purposes are different and and what they mean to the clients quite different a revocable trust strictly speaking means it can be revoked but that also means it can be easily changed at any time it's not just that you you can revoke it you can go in and make edits to it you can change who a trustee would be or where assets are going um, it's a pretty simple process we can just draft a basically an amendment to that revocable trust at any point usually the revocable trust when you pass um, is going to become irrevocable when you pass away because obviously if you're not around you, you can't change it anymore. Um, the revocable trust is primarily an estate planning tool uh, because the, for tax purposes and financial purposes, it's going to be largely ignored. Um, you need to get things named in the name of that revocable trust, but it's not going to have its own tax return, anything like that. You can take things back out. You can put, you know, you can deed a property into it. You can deed the property back out of it without issues. Um, it's historically been a, a simpler way to deal with an estate rather than having to go into court, what's called going through probate. Um, frequently, I don't have to use revocable trust as much anymore um, because some other things, um, Indiana has a, a, a transfer on death provisions that they have adopted now. So in my own practice, I can use a lot of those and, and avoid some of the needs for the revocable trust. We can still do that certainly. And there are benefits because you can have more specific instructions in those. Um, but we have some alternatives that we can do as well. On the irrevocable trust side, um, that is more of a, frequently that's going to be an asset protection tool where if you want to transfer assets into an irrevocable trust that that's more permanent there are some ways to change that and then people have gotten creative with ways to change that um, or change those irrevocable trusts but the irrevocable in theory means it, it can't be revoked it's permanent uh, and, and usually you go into it with the assumption of that again we can draft some things in to change that uh, but they're frequently going to be um, uh, a lot of times they're a long-term care planning tool where you would transfer something into an irrevocable trust for asset protection purposes uh, for long-term care planning. Uh, if, you, if you think you need to go into a nursing home and you want to protect certain family assets, for instance, that may be one option to do an irrevocable trust. Um, they are quite a bit more complicated. They have their own tax identity for tax purposes. If you don't get income passed out of them in time, the tax consequences of them can be relatively nasty because the tax brackets go up quickly. Um, and they they really are a commitment and you need to make sure you understand what you're doing when you go into those because they're a challenge to get out of them. Um, we've had some in the, in the legal profession, things will come up as um, the estate taxes have gone up and Indiana has repealed its estate tax. Some people have gone into irrevocable trusts thinking they needed it uh, to protect assets and to do certain transfers for estate planning purposes. And then suddenly it didn't make that much sense anymore once the law changed. But we had that irrevocable trust and, and had to think of ways to get out of that. And there are ways frequently that, that can be worked, but it's, it's certainly a bit more of a challenge to do that. Um, so those would be as far as trusts, the main types. Um, the, the the backbone of any estate plan probably is just going to be your old, your standby will where you can spell out your general wishes. Um, most people are going to have a will and that will be their primary tool. Even if you have trust vehicles, you're usually going to have a will that's a backup uh, to catch anything that you forgot to transfer over into the name of the trust. Say you, you had a, a bank account that you forgot about that had $10,000 sitting in it that will is going to say probably if you have a trust system in place particularly a revocable that what to do with that um that asset that got missed and didn't get titled in the name of the trust so you are going to have those as well and frequently that's going to be the the primary backbone for most people yeah that's all 
I think significant information that helps people protect stuff that they've worked, you know, their entire life for, and they want to make sure that your wishes are known. Like you talked about, you know, just going through this process and, you know, you make sure your wishes are known so when something does happen, people don't have to worry about that stuff. To me, I think that that shows how much you care about your family is because you're taking the time to sit down, make your wishes known, but put this plan in place so then that they don't have to worry about that. You know, if you're a business owner, you create this plan that's in such a way that your family who may not be involved in that business knows probably very little about that business, doesn't have to get involved and, you know, spend their time trying to figure out how to run that business. There's just, there's so many things that this can help alleviate, so many problems that can help alleviate after your passing that it, it's such a huge benefit. I really appreciate you taking the time today, Grant, to uh, sit down with us and walk us through some of that information, trying to help us uh, get that, you know, cleared up a little bit. Uh, any last minute items you can think of that you want to add to this? I think there's some other topics we could cover, but we may be, be getting a little long for a single video, but perhaps we could, we could loop back around sometime and talk a little bit more about uh, long-term care planning options and dig a little bit more into some of the power of attorney uh, and, and medical documents briefly. Um, one thing to keep in mind is, is, of course, this is just general information. Um, I'm not, not your legal counsel. Um, you, you want to talk with your own, consult with your own advisor or in your own legal counsel in particular to make sure the advice uh, fits your particular situation. So I think that's about all I have. Um, thank you for giving me the, the opportunity to, to speak through this. And certainly, uh, hopefully, we, this will be useful to the, the folks that watch it. Yeah, Grant, I really appreciate you taking the time and coming and visiting with us. And like you said, uh, these are general information. Uh, always consult with your own personal attorney, your own financial professional to, to figure these out. Everybody's situation is different. There's no cookie cutter that says, hey, this applies to me, to my neighbor, to the brother. You know, that doesn't work that way. Everyone's situation is different. So, yeah, great point on saying that, Grant. Really appreciate that. Once again, Brett Rice, Grant Reeves with Core Vision Financial Group uh, coming to you today to talk to you about estate planning. If you have any questions, uh, our contact information will be here at the end. We're available on social media, by email, phone call. Please feel free to reach out and let us know if you have any questions about this. Thank you.